Eastern Time, 4 o'clock for those of you on the West Coast. 202 is the area code, 748-8920 for Democrats, and 202-748-8921 for Republicans. Julie from Staten Island, New York, on our line for Democrats. Your reaction to what you heard tonight from the President? President Obama, I trust him with the safety of our country. He's a smart man. He got Osama bin Laden, and he's taken out a whole lot of other um, terrorist, terrorist people to protect our country. And I think we need to come together as a nation and show his support and show understand that we voted for him. Mm -hmm. He's a smart man, and I trust his judgment, and I feel safe with him as President of the United States. Julie, one of the goals of the administration was to, in the words of the Attorney General, reassure a jittery nation. Did he do that tonight? Absolutely. Absolutely. I never questioned what he was doing. You hear all these pundits saying things about he's weak, he doesn't know this, he doesn't know that. They don't know what he's looking at. And everybody forgets he got Osama bin Laden. And he was the most dangerous man in the world. Okay. And he was able to get him when other presidents and other nations weren't able to. Julie, thanks very much for the call. Harry is joining us on our line for Republicans from Mantua, New Jersey. Harry, what did you hear tonight from the president? Well, I heard facts. I heard half truth. Mm -hmm. And he's leaving some of the truth out. Like, they targeted Jews and Christians on a Christmas party, you know, He's afraid to say the word is Islamic terrorist. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's really getting under the American people's skin that he's afraid to say this. And he's a apologistic president, and it's got to stop. Somewhere it's just got to stop. Harry, thanks for the call. Also getting your tweets. One of our viewers, Jason Grant, saying it is a terrorist problem not a gun problem. You can send us a tweet with the hashtag uh, C-SPAN chat. And Billy is joining us from Kentucky, Democrats line. Your reaction to what you heard tonight? Um, yes, sir. The way I understand it, I kind of agree about the gun thing because if you keep us from being able to get our guns, I, the way I see it, terrorists, they don't get their guns legally anyway. And if you keep us from being able to protect ourselves, then how are we going to protect ourselves? I mean, I think that, you know, these thugs, as he called them, are, they're getting everything illegally. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're, I mean, sometimes they give them in their name, but even if you keep us from protecting our families and ourselves, then, I mean, they're still going to get their weapons. And that just makes us weaker as Americans and from protecting our families. And I do believe we should go over there and just, take care of them once and for all instead of every time you turn around we have to go to war with these same type of people i'm not well, saying but, muslims but, or nothing but, but that that's the question how do you take care of them and the president addressed the issue of no ground troops saying we need special operation forces airstrikes also going after their financial uh sources but what else should we be doing that we're not doing well, for one, when they're coming, I mean, we're sitting here, and we know that they're trying to attack us. It's like mm -hmm. they have Paris and everything. And we're letting them, like, why are we letting them to continue to keep coming in here? I think there should be better background checks. And I think that once they are in here, I'm not saying not to help people because I'm all about helping people. But once they're here, I think they should keep tabs on them and see when they, if they are buying assault rifles, if they are buying weapons, if they're buying stuff to make pipe bombs and once they once you see they're purchasing stuff like that i think that they should you know be investigated and be checked out okay billy thanks for the call you're looking at a live view of the north portico entrance of the white house from just across lafayette park the president addressing the nation just after eight o'clock eastern time his speech running about 13 minutes bill has this tweet saying i was hoping for a much more aggressive tone against isil including instituting a draft of 100,000 men and women attacking Syria and Iraq. Solomon is joining us from Austin, Texas, also on our line for Democrats. What did you hear tonight, Solomon? Yes, I understand what the president is trying to keep a calmness in our country, but we already have ISIS and other individuals with hate on their heart, and we cannot police up other people countries where we already have them here in America. And I think the president 
when he said, you know, we're trying to be tactful. I did 13 years military. We can only do so much for other countries whenever they have disasters and all that. Mm -hmm. But we have to back up a little bit and focus on taking care of America. Okay, thanks very much for the call. The House and Senate both in session this week. Likely more reaction tomorrow from lawmakers from the president's address as Congress tries to wrap up a spending bill set to be in place, needs to be in place by this Friday. Otherwise, a possible st uh, stopgap spending bill would be put in place to extend that into early next week. We'll have live coverage, of course, here on C-SPAN, the Senate on C-SPAN 2. And we're getting your reaction to the president's speech tonight from the White House. We also welcome our listeners on C-SPAN radio. Elizabeth from Hudson, Ohio, Republican line. What did you hear tonight, Elizabeth? Well, I was uh, quite disappointed by the president's stance uh, regarding the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. I think what he's saying is, uh, you know, the altruistic, uh, you know, what we want to believe as Americans, that right. we, we are this nation, we can do these things, yada, yada. I get that. But you know what? The, these guys are smart and they know what they're doing and they're turning our ideology against us and they're softening our hearts uh with fellow muslims now it's a hard line to take mm -hmm. but i think at this point in time we need to really wake up and see and hear and experience what's going on and we need to be more resolute with our military and with our ideology which may be a little bit harsh at times but um, it, this is not going to fly with me anymore. Um, I'm just uh, more looking at harsher Republicans with a harder line because I really believe this is a war we're going to lose unless we pay attention. Eliz you. Elizabeth, when the president said tonight that we will destroy ISIS, do you believe him? Not at all. Not at all. No, no, not at all. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And this is mm -hmm. from uh, Josie, who says there was nothing new in this speech, and I do not feel safer. By the way, the speech has been posted on our website. You can watch it online anytime at cspan.org and a chance to see it again in about uh, 20 minutes or so here on C-SPAN. Tammy joining us from Virginia, Independent Line. Good evening to you, Tammy. Yes. You're on the air. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to say that uh, we went to war in Afghanistan, we went to war in Iraq, and they didn't do anything to us, but yet ISIS is over here destroying American lives, and uh, we're not going to do anything about it. It doesn't make sense. Tammy, thanks for the call. The FBI leading now the investigation into the shooting deaths of 14 people, 21 injured in San Bernardino, California, taking over from local and state authorities. Rafael joining us from Tampa, Florida, Republican line. Good evening. Yes, how you doing? I was calling. Um, I'm just figuring out the president really has a good, great idea mm -hmm. and really has knows what's going on. He's just... You know, you're just confused. There's a lot of people out here that's not knowing that's going on. They don't really know that the president is very trying, trying to focus on the Muslims. The Muslims not the person that's making everything bad. It's I'm going to stop you there because we're getting some feedback, but we got the essence of what you were saying. So, Raphael, thank you. Eric Levinson says, nothing unexpected on our Twitter page. These guns were legally bought. We need to correct that gigantic loophole. The president using the address tonight to also talk about gun safety and revisions of gun laws that would include those so-called assault weapons and uh, guns designed for mass shootings. Part of the debate uh, that we focused on this morning on the Washington Journal, in part based on the editorial yesterday front page of the New York Times. The first time since 1920 the New York Times has published an editorial on its front page. Bill is joining us. Gerard, Ohio, Independent Line. Good evening. Yes, uh, the president's speech tonight, it's the people killing people, not the guns killing people. And also the president wants to take away all the armored vehicles and military equipment from the police departments, and we're going to be in big trouble. 
Okay, Bill, thanks very much for the call. Let's go next to uh, Sherry, joining us from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Democrats line. Go ahead. Yes, good evening. Good I evening. wanted to comment um, to make a point very clear. I think that in order for us to get anything accomplished in this country, Democrats and Republicans must come together. If we don't respect each other, how do we expect other countries to respect us? If people don't like Obama, they should certainly respect the presidency of the United States. I think that if he had some backing from Republicans or Congress or anybody else on either side of the aisle, mm -hmm. that we could come together and we could have a safer place to, leave, to live in. Thank you very much. Thank you for adding your voice to the conversation. And Lillian saying, I feel less secure than anything will change to keep this country safe. We're at C-SPAN on our Twitter page and getting your calls and comments as well. Curtis is joining us from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Independent Line. Go ahead, please. Yes, how you doing? Um, you know what? The woman that just spoke, I agree. She said everything. She took the words right out of my mouth. But what I want to say is congratulations to her for having that kind of thought process because there's a lot of people that don't realize how divided this country really is. If Democrats and Republicans are acting ignorant on TV, what do you think the American people are thinking? You have a lot of people who are choosing sides mm -hmm. instead of saying, hey, we need to come together. So with that being said, one of the things that really bothers me is he just got done saying in this country, you're not, he said in this country, you know, we have a belief. Mm -hmm. And he said that everybody is supposed to get along and it doesn't matter your color. The problem is that color thing that he's talking about has been broken a long time ago. So people still see color. They're not seeing Americans uniting with Americans. So Curtis, we need to unite, like she said. Curtis, what would you have wanted the president to say this evening? We, if, if, if there's a threat, okay, let me tell you this. If a cop is still threatened, he takes a person out, mm -hmm. most of the time even when they're unarmed. We have people right now who want to take the American people out. He hasn't said anything that was strong enough to make me believe that he's actually going to do this. Yes, very intelligent guy, but there's nothing strong enough that is out here that he hasn't said already. Mm -hmm. We need to take these people out before America is done with, and we need to do it together. Curtis, thanks very much for the call. David says, I think he has an agenda to get rid of guns so we can't protect ourselves. Guns don't kill anyone ever people kill people. Our next call is from Chevy Chase, Maryland, Elizabeth, Democrats line. Did you watch the whole speech tonight? Yes, sir, I did. And what's your takeaway? Um, I, you know, I was, I was very happy that President Obama used this opportunity to talk about gun control a little bit. I think it's unbelievable that 89 gun deaths happen every single day and an estimated 40% of gun transactions happen without background checks. This is a gun problem. I can't, I mean, how can we make the argument that people on a terror watch list are allowed to have guns? Um, we have to say enough. I think we should take the Australian example. They haven't had a mass shooting since they enacted their gun legislation. You know, I, I, does Congress care about the lives of their citizens or do they care about an inanimate object more than, than the life of these 14 people that just died in San Bernardino? Elizabeth, though, when you hear from the NRA and other supporters of gun rights and uh, the Second Amendment, they say that the only way to protect yourself is with a firearm and you cannot take away your constitutional rights that are inherent in this country. How do you respond to that? I think that the Second Amendment was written a very long time ago. Uh, the Constitution also said that we had the right to own slaves. So I think, you know, times change and we have to evolve with the times. I understand that people like having their guns, I, you know, it, it is an amendment, it is their right, but they have to agree that we have to be stronger on our background checks. I mean, that, that really should not even be a question anymore after all of the mass shootings that have happened. Elizabeth from just outside of Washington, D.C., thanks very much for the call. Let's hear from a Republican. Josh is joining us from Fort Pierce, Florida. Good evening. Your reaction to what the president said tonight from the Oval Office? Hey, how you doing tonight, man? Fine, thank um, you. My comment is, uh, you know, I was in the Marine Corps. I know a lot of Marines, uh, a lot of my family in the Marine Corps. One thing I do know is that the president 
as a direct line to the Commandant and the Marine Corps. One thing I do know is our Marines have no fear of going into Raqqa, the ISIS stronghold, ISIS capital. Mm-hmm. We took Fallujah out in, you know, a matter of weeks, not even. Okay, he needs to take the chains off of our leaders, our military leaders, and let them go to work. Airstrikes aren't going to cut it. It's not going to cut it at all. You ask any Marine right now what they want to do, they want to go over there. No questions asked. They want to go over there. Take the chains off and let them go. Josh, thanks for the call, and as you were giving us your comment, this is a tweet that came in as well from a viewer saying it seems Congress is not doing their job. They haven't voted or authorized any actions in at least six years. Congress, do your job. Republican presidential candidate Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina issuing a tweet tonight saying the president is intentionally misleading the nation about the threat we face from ISIL. Again, that tweet from Senator Lindsey Graham, a GOP candidate. Henry is joining us from Atlanta. Democrats line. Good evening. No, yes. Um, my thing is, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a veteran myself. Everybody criticizing the president on what he needs to do. But a lot of those folks don't realize that going to war, it takes money, it takes time, and it takes the effort of killing people's and wounded veterans and then when they come back home they don't want to take care of them you know i agree with what the president is doing you know because a lot of people don't want to say this but i'm gonna say you know all this stemmed from the bush's era you know we wouldn't be in this mess if bush hadn't went to afghanistan and iraq afghanistan you know because those people didn't do nothing to us you know, okay. so the thing is, why go over there and start this and knowing that you're going to have backlash? Henry from Atlanta, thanks for the call. Another tweet from Congressman Peter King, Republican from New York, saying the speech was a total failure of leadership and defense of a failed policy. No substance, no change of policy. Let's hear from Walter joining us from Clute, Texas, Democrats line. Good evening. What did you hear tonight from the president? What's your reaction? Hi, good evening. Um, I'm uh, actually a Marine Corps combat veteran from the first Gulf War. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And um, I think they need to make public or uh, some sort of sunshine law regarding the legal review or appeal process being placed uh, for any American being placed on this list uh, it seems like it might be arbitrary um you know what it takes to be placed the on no a list, list or the no yes, fly sir. list mm-hmm. yes what it takes to be placed on a list or to be taken off the list yeah um you know it doesn't sound like it would fall under our you know constitutional processes as far as uh Maybe being as you know legal, right? You know, what, but what is it, the it, it, as you know, though, the, one of the arguments is that many people can be falsely put on that list, and then constitutionally, you are denied your right to protect yourself if you want to buy a firearm. Yes, sir. And uh, I, I firmly believe that everybody should have the right. Maybe um, you know there should be more background checks as far as the gun show loophole, mm-hmm. but as far as taking away. Uh, long guns or any high capacity magazines I, I don't think that's right I'm a lifelong Democrat but I also believe in you know uh, the Second Amendment thanks very much for the call also this tweet from Caden who says it's as if he never spoke he said nothing new and made no actual decisions everything he said was fluff to buy himself time our last call is on the Republican line from Washington State Don good evening what did you hear tonight I heard, I, uh, I heard the same thing that most of the Republican callers heard. Uh, it was just a lot of fluff and no meat to it. But one of the things he keeps saying every time he speaks, he calls it ISIL or ISIL instead of ISIS. And but when he does that, 
it brings a whole new meaning to the caliphate, which the borders are different under ISIL than they are under ISIS. So he's sending a message to Israel and the world that he doesn't care about Israel, has no meaning for him. Mm -hmm. Because under the ISIL, the borders put Israel right in dead center of the caliphate, and that's who they want to destroy first before they come to us. So if he would just quit saying ISIL and call it what it is, ISIS radicals. Okay. Don, thanks for the call. By the way, tomorrow morning, Lorenzo Vidin, who is the director of the George Washington University Program on Extremism, will be among our guests to talk not only about what the president said tonight, but also the threat we face here in the homeland from terrorist organizations, including Daesh or ISIS or ISIL, depending on what term or phrase you want to use. And also a couple of events that are related to all of this. The Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern Time. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.